Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. When I was three months old, Mount St. Helens erupted not far south of where I was living. At the time, it was the largest volcanic eruption of my lifetime. It was also the only major volcanic eruption of my lifetime. Since then, dozens more major eruptions have happened, killing tens of thousands of people and spewing dust and ash into the atmosphere. As powerful and destructive as these eruptions were, none of them comes close to being a supervolcano. Volcanologists classify eruptions on a Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. It runs from category 1 at the bottom to 8 at the top, and going up one step means an eruption is 10 times bigger than the category below it. Supervolcanoes occur in category 8. I should add that volcanologists dislike the term supervolcano because it conjures up all sorts of associations that just aren't true. None of these in Category 8 have occurred in recorded history. The last one happened 26,000 years ago in New Zealand. By contrast, humans didn't reach New Zealand until 700 years ago. In the last 10,000 years, eight Category 7 eruptions are known to have occurred. The most recent was Mount Tambora in Indonesia in 1815. It put so much dust into the atmosphere that it blocked sunlight to the point where 1816 was called the year without a summer. It's possible that another Category 7 eruption in 536 caused brief climate effects and corresponding social upheavals. Bear in mind that these eruptions were 10 times smaller than a supervolcano. The largest eruption in the 20th century was a Category 6 in Alaska. That's a hundred times smaller than a supervolcano. Mount St. Helens was a 5, which is a thousand times smaller. These enormous super eruptions are so vanishingly rare because you need a perfect storm of geological conditions for them to form. You need to get a ridiculous amount of the right type of magma into one place and then have enough persuasion to get it to erupt and hope it's a gigantic eruption and not a little fizzle. There's a reason it hasn't happened in 26,000 years. It's probably not going to happen in your lifetime. But let's say it does. Let's say the stars align and a supervolcano happens in Yellowstone tomorrow. Yellowstone is sort of the go-to because it's a place in the North American plate where the crust is thin enough that magma can well up and is a prime candidate to be a supervolcano. The old faithful geyser is a manifestation of this thinness of crust. If the entire Yellowstone system gets enough oomph behind it to cause a Category 8 eruption, that would ruin your day if you lived in Yellowstone. All the volcano -y effects like lava and mud flows and whatnot would be confined to the immediate area. What would definitely ruin your day if you lived elsewhere, would be all the ash and dust it would eject into the atmosphere. That would cause severe disruptions to air travel because it's hard to fly a plane through an ash cloud when you can't see. It would affect ground transport as well and probably crash the global economy because we couldn't move goods and people around. But again, very unlikely to happen. It will also block out sunlight, leading to the year without a summer I mentioned earlier. Right about now, some of you are probably thinking that's a good solution to climate change. It's not. First off, it's temporary. Within a year or two, all of the ash and the dust will settle out, and then we'll be back to where we were before. All the CO2 that's causing the climate change will still be there, plus a bunch more from the volcano. Secondly, the lack of sunlight will put a serious dent in plant growth, including most of the food that we eat. No, we can't just switch to an all-meat diet. What do cows eat? Let me put these volcanoes in perspective. The Earth is big. Really, really big. Unbelievably, mind-bogglingly huge. There are 42 volcanic eruptions every day. They're so small, they aren't worth noting. They're also so spread out that they don't influence each other so you don't get a knock-on effect of chained volcanic eruptions. Unless you live downhill from an active volcano, you don't need to worry. 
If you do live downhill from an active volcano, you need to be prepared. Like I keep saying, healthy respect, not fear. Earthquakes are normal in a volcanic zone, but check with the U.S. Geological Survey or your country's equivalent for advisories and warnings. If they say to evacuate, do it. Don't lollygag, and definitely don't stick around and take pictures. Otherwise, you're one more corpse for rescuers to pull out of a mud flow, and they do not need that. That's super volcanoes. Extremely unlikely to happen, and even if one does, it's not going to directly kill you unless you're on top of it. One has not erupted in the entirety of recorded human history, and it probably won't happen until long after you're dead. Thanks for watching. Up and Steve.